Hi guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Nyx and in this video I'll be teaching you how to make a Roblox GFX without using rigs. This means we'll be posing our avatar in Roblox Studio, rendering them in Blender, and then styling our render in a program like Photoshop. Here are some GFX I've made with this method. I'll show you how to do everything today, step by step, and everything you need to download will be linked in the description below. The very first step will be getting your Roblox avatar ready. 3D clothes like pants, shirts, and jackets are difficult to use and we won't be covering them today. Make sure your avatar is wearing only classic clothes and accessories. Once your avatar is ready, we need to download Roblox Studio. To do this, you can go to create.roblox.com or on the Roblox website, you can click on create at the top of the page. Once you see the creator hub, go ahead and click download under Get Roblox Studio. Install this on your computer, then open it up. Once it's open, choose baseplate or classic baseplate. This is what your Roblox Studio will look like if you're opening it for the first time. We can see that our plugins tab is empty, but we need to install two plugins to make our GFX today. To start, click on Manage Plugins, then select the plus symbol in the top right. Make sure this dropdown says Plugins if it doesn't already. Then, in the search bar, type in Load Character Light. This is a free to use plugin, and the link will also be in the description for you. After we install it, we can see that it has been added to our toolbar. Next, type Legacy Animation Editor and install this plugin like you did the first. After installing, we can close the windows. On the right, we can see the Explorer view. This shows us everything that is currently in our workspace. If for some reason it's closed, you can reopen it by going to the View tab and clicking Explorer on the left. Open up Load Character Light and type in the username of the avatar you're using. Be sure to select Spawn at Origin. Doing this makes sure our character spawns somewhere we can find them, and it also makes it easier when we import them into Blender. So, select Spawn at Origin, then click on Spawn R15. You can close the load character window after spawning your avatar in. Using WASD, we can move around our workspace. Right click and move the mouse to rotate your view and look around. Q and E will move us up and down. Navigate so that we can see our character. Then select the model tab, click on move, and use the arrows to move our avatar so we can see their entire body. To pose our model, open Legacy Animation Editor, then select our model. Confirm the selection, and then you'll see a grid under your avatar, and then you will be able to select and adjust individual body parts. This part is a lot of trial and error, as well as personal preference. Practice makes perfect. I'm going to speed up the- <laughs> This part is a lot of trial and error, as well as personal preference. I'm going to speed up the section where I pose my avatar. Once you are happy with your pose, keep the editor open. Select the model tab and anchor the model. If you can't anchor your model, make sure they are selected in the explorer window. Now we can close the animation editor. It will say we will lose our work, but because we anchored our model, the pose will be saved. Now it's time to export and save our model and their accessories so we can import them into Blender later. In the explorer window, click on the arrow next to the username so we can see our avatar's accessories. Select all of the accessories using control and left click, then right click and select export selection. You have to save each avatar's accessories and avatar to its own folder, so be sure to make a new one for each avatar somewhere on your computer. I'm naming the accessories and then saving them to my new folder. Be sure to right-click and delete the selected accessories when you're done. 
Next, click on your username in the Explorer tab. Right click and export the selection. Name and save it to the same folder as the accessories. And we can move on to Blender. On the Blender download page, it will offer Blender 4.3, but I personally use the long-term support version of Blender, which is 4.2. Download and install whichever you prefer to your computer. Next, we need to install Lightroom.blend from Google Drive, which is linked in the description below. Once you have Blender downloaded and installed, open up the Lightroom file in Blender. To navigate in Blender, click the scroll wheel and move the mouse to rotate your view. Hold shift and click the scroll wheel while moving the mouse to move the viewport without changing the angle. Let's import our avatar into the Lightroom. Click File, then Import, and select Wavefront.obj. Find your avatar in the file where you saved it from Studio. First, open Avatar.obj. Again, go to File, Import, Wavefront.obj, and select Accessories. Be sure to check Split by Group before you import the accessories. We can zoom in and out using the scroll wheel. Click on a circle with a dark corner at the top right so we can view our character's textures and make sure nothing is missing. Let's make our character glossy. Click on the avatar and then the materials tab, which is a circle with dark sections. Adjusting the roughness will make our character more or less glossy. You can also adjust the metallic slider to your liking. If you don't want your character to be glossy, you can skip this set. To make your accessories glossy, repeat these steps on each handle item. Before we render, we need to adjust our render settings. The render tab has the little TV icon. Set our render to cycles and then GPU compute. Lower the viewport samples to prevent crashing unless you have a powerful computer. Adjust the render settings higher or lower based on your PC's power too. I'm leaving them as is. Click on the tab below render settings. Here you can change the size and resolution of the final render. You can also see we have the PNG file type selected and RGBA, meaning our render will process with a transparent background, so we can edit it more easily later. It's time to position our camera. Select View, then Camera, then Active Camera. Next, select View, Navigation, then Walk Navigation. From here, we can use the mouse to look around and use W, A, S, and D like in Roblox Studio and Q and E as well. Adjust your camera until it's in a position you want and then we'll move on to adjusting the lighting. At the top right, select the shaded circle next to material preview so we can see the viewport shading. This allows us to preview our lighting. If you want to change any lights, select Lightroom Stuff, then Circles, and then the Materials tab. Personally, I only adjust the back, warm, and cold lights. I'm going to reduce the backlight and darken it slightly. I'm going to make my warm light more red and make the cold light a dark purple. Play around and find what looks good on your avatar and with your pose. Here I rendered my image but I noticed that the hair accessories were not fully visible. I can fix the clipping easily. Close the rendered image and click on the hair clips in the viewport. When they're highlighted, click on the Move tool in the toolbar on the left. 
The arrows to move the hair clips will show up on the screen. Zoom out if you aren't able to see them, then use the arrows to adjust the accessory. Once you have adjusted everything, we can render our final image. Do this by selecting Render, then Render Image. Give your computer time to process the whole image, then save as a PNG. Next, open up your image in your photo editing software of choice. I'm using Photopea today. It's a free, browser-based copycat of Photoshop and I've really enjoyed using it. Everyone styles GFX differently, so I'm going to show my process instead of talking step by step. Editing takes a lot of practice to get right and to create your own style. In the bio, I'll include the brushes I use, as well as fonts, backgrounds, and overlays I use as well. They'll be available in the same folder as the Lightroom file. You can download the Lightroom.blend file separately if you want to use your own textures and overlays. I find a lot on Pinterest and Pixabay. I also get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest for my GFXs. If you want me to do a step-by-step -step tutorial explaining my process for styling GFX, let me know in the comments. And here's the final result. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if this tutorial was helpful in the comments, and please feel free to ask any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and have a wonderful day.